All right, what is good, world, wargaming community, war to enthusiasts, historians, laymen, anybody out there who simply has a thirst for knowledge? Welcome back to another Let's Play video. And we're going to go ahead and jump right in from where we left off. We are now in the month of November 1942. It's been now well over a year in the game of uh, our play session or play scenario that started in summer 1941. We started it um, second fortnight of June 1941. So it's been well, well over a year. Uh, the map has changed in some notable ways, I must say. Uh, I can say, I will say. And what we got is the German Ostier Army of the East has seems, seems to have established and not only established but expand its foothold in the Soviet occupied territories, or I guess now it would be, uh, what would it be? I think it'd be uh, Nazi occupied territories, essentially. And we've taken Leningrad, which was a very swift battle. Uh, what else? We've, we were able to push onto Smolensk and Bryansk. We have not made any substantial push onto Moscow yet, uh, but we also made further gains east of Ukraine, regions like uh, Kursk, pretty much this entire rail junction, which, you know, uh, the border today, I, I couldn't tell you who, who, yeah, I couldn't tell you what, what, what the national borders were, but at least in this time frame, um, this was considered part of like, you know, Mother Russia, essentially. Right, right on this edge is like the extent of Mother Russia. And then further west, you would have Ukraine, which has another historical framework. Further west, you have Belarus or Belorussia, as it was known. And keep in mind, we're talking about the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union was, in essence, the Russian Empire or an extension of, of, the, of the Tsar Empire that only this time you didn't have the monarchy. You had the communist regime instead. So they were trying to take as much territory as they could. This included the Baltic states. They were not simply occupied territories. They were actually annexed. They were part of uh, the Soviet state. And, and I think this was just the theme of international communism, right, was to um, est establish a new world order, right, the second world, right? Most, most of us know about the first world. No, most of us know about third world countries. But what's the second world? The second world was, for much of the 20th century, the, uh, essentially the, uh, the, the new world order that the uh, international, if not communists, at the very least, international Marxists, you know, were trying to establish. It was a new status quo. So long history there, but if we were to have a full global map of the Soviet Union, it wouldn't just stop here. We would have territories far out in Asia as well, uh, dozens and dozens of countries between here, uh, Siberia, and, and, and like East Asia pretty much. So it was it truly was a world event. And, you know, even in Latin America, you could argue that you had this, um, you know, at least at least in theory, you know, the, the idea of this this uh, new world order being established as far as the actual like political ties economic ties all that stuff i mean that's where things get very messy um indeed but at the very least if you want to simplify it as a layman you know we, we could talk about just the soviet union in general terms so the third reich its army right the ost here which is its primary branch of its military has expanded you know we we've we actually started to you know, occupy the, you know, former mother Russia, right? We've, we've gone beyond Ukraine now, where we're now approaching Voronezh, right? That's certainly part of mother Russia, Bryansk, I believe that will still be part of Belarus. Um, other air notable areas further south include areas like Mykolp. We've even crossed the Caucasus mountain range. And now we're actually starting to enter other nations in this, in these regions as well. It's, it's not, now the, the Third Reich has actually gone beyond uh, the former mother Russia and there's, there's several other nations here. So generally speaking, um, the strategic situation has changed notably uh, in subtle ways. I mean, I would argue that the Third Reich, you know, at least as far as from an operational standpoint, we didn't see a super swift uh, campaign as intense as Barbarossa. Instead, we saw kind of more piecemeal operations that were still very large in scale, but I would probably argue are more probably more akin to the scale of the Battle of France. Uh, that would be Case Yellow, more so than, than actual Operation Barbarossa. Barbarossa really was, 
as an operation a, a true outlier in that sense because it was a full front wide wide assault instead we kind of saw more methodical uh, smaller scale operations but it wasn't just case blue although it ultimately did did become a case blue like uh, progress right we crossed the don river we haven't attacked stalingrad we decided to go full south commit all our momentum to army groups at least to push deep in the south and we are actually making decent headway into towards baku um, and we may even make the Black Sea into, in essence, an Axis Lake once we take Sevastopol. So that's that. Um, other notable events, uh, the, probably the most strategically, the biggest one was uh, Operation Torch, right, where the Allies landed Morocco, Algeria, and they even, the French even revolted in Tunisia, and they even have temporarily captured the port, port of Tunis, which which historically was like the last bastion of, of the uh you know, the German, African, German and Italian African forces defending Tunisia throughout the Tunisian campaign in, in 1943. So the fact that the French already have it, the Italians are trying to put some pressure there, but, you know, will it be enough? We'll see. So we'll see how these future operations play out. I am curious to know. All I can tell you now is that uh, the situation in Africa is, is looking a lot more, uh, I think the word would be precarious for uh for the axis forces given that their entire left flank has just been torn wide open and they really have no forces except for this one italian eighth army uh, but stopping pretty much all the allied units that are going to be advancing so that's that and then of course we still got a over here uh he fell back to Tobruk, apparently his high command or headquarters rather and and you know we're trying to build that up and then we're also just we were, we were strategically we haven't attacked alexandria but the, the idea was let's build up our forces before we launch an attack and the supply lines are just very tenuous right so um, we've not we haven't really been able to confidently assemble a force uh, to attack alexandria so maybe this turn will be that turn and then as far as uh, the defense in france well it certainly got a lot weaker now that uh now that we've had to do this emergency deployment to to try to protect this flank here so i think with with a nice little intro though intro there set aside let's actually start the uh, start the turn and actually get this underway we're going to start the log file we will start with access production since we already have them here i'll start with the mediterranean front since it kind of takes priority right now um i believe i also got to point out that i believe the axis have actually lost a production point with the loss of tunis so i'm going to actually update that um, the Western Front, I think the Axis are going to go down to 16 production points, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't know if the Allies, will the Allies gain a production point? I guess technically they do, don't they? Pretty sure they do. Uh, presuming they can trace the supply path from Tunis to, say, uh, London, right? And right now, since they control all these seas, these sea basins, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Go all the way around, cross the Atlantic to London. Uh, oh, and let me also pull out the rule book um, definitely do that listening to some tracks uh, very much good music good music helps I will tell you now um, but let's find these rule book here we go you know so uh, I really do mean it I hope you all are ha having a better day than than me for sure so with that said um, let's start the production we're gonna do dice rolls now this is a new rule that I haven't really I've mentioned a bunch of times but I haven't actually uh you, you all haven't seen it in the game yet but it's um called uh, uh i think it's called supply maintenance but basically uh with the northern front and mediterranean front if you do decide to send units over there that are not residents that don't have the r that don't have the v or the e essentially they are going to suffer from something called uh, uh i think it's called a uh, desert maintenance and basically, each and every turn, you have to spend five production points by default to keep that unit just active. So it is it is very inefficient. So that basically means that typically, although our production on the Mediterranean front would be 25 production points for the Axis by default, right? Um, since we have this Italian army deployed, it's actually going to consume five production points. So we basically lose a die roll when we're rolling for our production. So that's going to be a problem. Chances are it's going to slow down our advance in Alexandria. So we'll see. We're rolling four dice. Dice are not very good. I count seven. I count ten. I only count ten dice rolls for 
for North Africa, that's really, that's really not enough. Um, it really isn't. So I think what I'm going to do, can we build more units in North Africa? No, right? All these, all these French units, I'm just going to delete them because I don't think we need them. I'm pretty sure Tunisia has already fallen. So I'm going to go ahead. I really don't know what's the best move here for the Axis. All I can tell you is that Alexandria is being um, delayed even more than before. And our, our supply situation is so tenuous right now. Um, I'm thinking we go all out on Alexandria while we still can. But we need, we need more units to protect the flank. You know, I need to transfer more units to protect his flank. This Italian unit won't be enough unless we can, if we can, if we can take Tunis, we may have a chance to then send this German Panzer Corps over. But of course, it's going to suffer from acclimatization. So it's going to take a while before this unit is actually able to move around. Plus, keep in mind, I'm going to have to use OKW to move those units around. And OKW is already at level, it's under strength. So I'm, I'm seeing some really big, namely logistical hurdles for the Axis. In fact, I really don't think, I really don't, I think Tunisia is already lost, quite frankly. It's, it's lost. So, you know, the smartest move, in my opinion, if I was going to be really strategic right now, I think would be to abandon Alexandria altogether and, and just do a, a, just a complete and total, just, just, just get the heck out of here, run and try to get as many forces as I can back into Libya as I basically redeploy the Africa Corps to Tunisia and, and see if I can achieve some sort of strategic victory that way because I won't be able to uh, take Alexandria, I don't think, and then expect um, this situation to be like in good shape. I mean, if the, if the Allies start exploiting this position more and more, they may be able to even invade Italy. And that will be very problematic. So I'm thinking the best course of action for us to do is to um, is maybe abandon Alexandria. Um, I really don't want to do that. But I don't, I don't really see there being really any other really any other favorable strategic position. I could also leave behind like an Italian army. At the very least, the you know the the Italians could slow down the the British as they probably will launch their own counteroffensive. Either way, it's just a it's a big old uh, clusterfuck if you ask me right now for the Axis. But these this Desert Africa Corps is still very powerful. So, but right now, where can I deploy it best? Um, I think my objective right now, strategically for the Mediterranean theater, is just to buy as much time as I can. I mean, I really wanted to take Alexandria. But I think right now, the main goal is to just buy time. The Axis need to buy time. So I think I think we're going to pull out. Let's just do that. Um, pretty embarrassing, I think, strategically for the Axis, given given their progress. I mean, they've, they've won some really great battles against the British uh, Army over here. I think it's the British 8th Army, technically. Um, but it wasn't enough. It still wasn't enough to actually... You know, all those operational wins weren't enough to change the situation strategically. So I'm actually going to spend the 10 production points then on this Africa core unit so that it builds into full strength as I then proceed to pull out my units as fast as I can and get them redeployed to Tunisia. And the rate the race for Tunisia is now on pretty much. I still want to hopefully maybe retake Tunisia. We'll see. So that is the Mediterranean front production, Western front production. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and spend the 10 production points on this army group G and see if I can use it to still take Tunis. There is still a possibility that we could capture Tunis and it's better than nothing. Um, but I got to keep in mind that I'm very vulnerable right now with this HQ to a British landing or American landing in Sicily. They could land, they could attack Sicily right now. So with six production points left, I'm just going to go ahead and build these militia units these Italian militia units, because I don't really have anything else to, to spend. All I have is this OKW, uh, and it is just in really bad shape. So another thing I could do, I just realized this, what I actually could do is I could reduce the production on the Eastern Front, transfer it back over to the Western Front to see if I can fix the situation a little bit. And that might be strategically the better option. 
um, although our priority is still on the Eastern Front. Uh, I really would like to prioritize on the Eastern Front. 89 production is really good. Um, 79 production is not as good, but still should be good enough for what we're trying to do. Should be good enough to at least take Sevastopol, but unless we do something about the situation, I'm concerned that Italy might fall. Um, and I don't, I don't want the Africa Corps to, to get stuck. Um, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure uh, Italy will not be demoralized until the Allies take Libya. So as long as we're able to protect Libya, we should be in good order. I'm just concerned about this flank over here. Um, for example, in theory, the Allies could maybe land in Rome on this next turn, and that would be that would be really bad, wouldn't it? If they if they made an attack on Rome. Could could they pull off an attack on Rome? Holy crap. Let's see the conditions if Rome were to fall. You know, what does it take to conquer a nation, right? So there's a section in this game that talks about conquest. Uh, production, victory, draw, Germany, uh, Italy, command and supply. Italy defeat. Upon Italian defeat, 16.9. Let's find that out. So now I realize why my games take so long. It's because I look at these rule books a lot. 16.9 defeat. A great or major power is defeated when its capital is enemy controlled and all national units are eliminated during any political phase. Okay. So then the other question I have then is what about the supplies? And minor power is defeated. Um, we're not dealing with that. So Italy, I mean, if, uh, if Rome were to fall, that would be a bad thing. That's one problem. The other major problem, do we have any German reinforcements right now? We do. We have, a, we have a few. Really not that many. We're in the month of November, aren't we? So this is going to be a weird move. But I'm going to put this fortress unit in Rome. <laughs> I'm going to put that fortress unit in Rome because I just do not want the, the, the um, I do not want the Italians doing any, I don't, I don't want the allies doing anything uh, sneaky, pretty much, on on our on our positions. Um, but like I've said, our situation is extremely tenuous right now for the Axis. Um, so we can put that unit there. Can we build any more Italian units? No. Dang, I bet I cannot. I think we need to even move some Italian units to uh, to Sicily. Like I need to I need to pull out like militia units and so on. Get get our asses to Sicily as soon as possible. Um, so that's one move. Um, what else? One production build. Other units that I can deploy. Uh, we'll go ahead and deploy another militia unit. Leave that in Rome as well. Um, any other builds that I want to do? Oh, actually, we'll, we'll instead, um, instead of this guy, I'll put the paratrooper unit there instead. And then... Um, yeah, I think I'm going to just start fortifying uh, Italy as best I can. So we'll see. Um, the other thing I want to just check for is the supplies of, of units, especially like Italian units. Like if, if Rome were to fall, can Italian units still be in supplies? Or will, will all of them be like out of supplies? Um, that's a good question. So doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm pretty sure Berlin is technically the supply base, not... Uh, not Rome. So, you know, we're checking for C. No, no, no. Um, supply checks. Friendly unit supply status is determined during supply check. Supply lines are routes no more than two hexes. Supply lines can be traced through friendly or disputed hexes. Beachheads, all this stuff. Dependent units are in road supply. Friendly sea lanes and rail da, 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 supply which units and cities depend on lanes. Sea supply, supply sources, supply origin. Here we go. So okay, for the axis, it is Berlin. So I'm pretty sure I'm I'm not seeing anything here for Rome, and it says all axis. So I'm presuming that as long as Berlin doesn't fall, we we should be good. Um, anything else that I would want to do on this turn as far as deploying new reinforcements? Um, well, I mean. This is definitely going to be a strategic setback, even on the uh, 
eastern front, if I'm transferring production away from the eastern front, moving it over to the western front. So technically, you're supposed to do this at the start of your production phase, right? You you get to uh, decide like your allocation of production points, and I could reallocate eastern front production to the western front, and there's no limit. I could I could transfer like even 20 production points, but that means that keep in mind that I, I won't be able to allocate any more to the eastern front until next summer, 1943. By then, which um, if I reduce it down to say 69. That means the next summer it would be back up to 79. So it would, it would be a really big setback for the Axis. The, the, I guess I, I just need to decide like how important is Alexandria? And I'll tell you now, Alexandria is very important, but it's not as important as, as the Eastern Front. I don't think it's as important as our, as our drive. Our most important drive right now, without a doubt, is this drive here. Um, if we can take one more town, Leninakan, we have a good chance of getting Turkey in the war. So this situation is not completely over just yet, but it, it does seem to be pretty much over in, in every other way for the Axis, as far as I can tell. So I think what I'm going to do is, yeah, deploy, mobilize, you name it. Um, so I think, yeah, I think we are going to do an allocation from the Eastern Front to the Western Front um, just to slow down the Allies a little bit. Um, keep in mind that next turn we do gain five more production points. In fact, maybe if I maybe I can just only allocate five production points. That might be a better amount. Uh, I don't know how many you can. I think you can only allocate at least 10, a minimum of 10 per turn. I don't think you can do it in, in, in groups of five. Well, you can with the Mediterranean front, but I don't know about the Eastern front. So let's go there, da -da 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 -da, look for the production. Let's keep this pretty fast, as fast as I can, so that we don't have to be here all day. Uh, allocation, da -da 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 -da, uh, here it is, allocation. It says, Axis can transfer 10 production points from one front to another, but it is slow and inefficient. That's not what we're dealing with. Those are transfers. Uh, for details, I got to go to 21.23 for the allocations not transfers two different things 21.23 is eastern front axis production is traced separately the axis can allocate western front pps to the eastern front allocations are made in 10 production point blocks initial allocations from 0 to 40 is no issue um, but then uh, increasing the axis can increase ef allocations to 40 production points uh, during any production phase, but once or above 40, the axis can only raise the allocation by 10 production points at summer seasons, but not until the EF has been activated. And then here's deallocations. In any production phase, the EF allocations can be reduced by any multiple of 10. So, um, and they, they immediately revert back to the Western Front. So, yeah, I, I would think that keeping OKW in good health Without a doubt, what's clear is that the Western Allied powers are putting a lot more strategic pressure on the Axis. And, you know, I got to think about, like, you know, where, how, how far am I willing to let the Western Allied powers gain ground if it means we can gain more ground in the East? And I'll tell you now, I think I'm willing to abandon all of Italy. I think I'm willing to abandon even all of France. But the only condition I have is that we need to make sure that our, our defensive lines uh, are impenetrable after that. You know, I can't I can't be losing any more territory after that because then they're going to attack Germany itself. Um, so, you know, uh, the only way it's going to happen is if I have strong units. Uh, this Africa Corps, for example, like it needs to stay alive. I don't want to lose the Africa Corps in North Africa. I'd rather pull it back to Italy if I can. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Um, also, reading up on the Africa Corps, does it have triple fire in uh, the Western Front, or will it only have double fire, or, or does it only have triple fire uh, in North Africa, or quadruple fire? That's the other question I have. Let's find out. It talks about production, talks about combat. It says, in desert terrain, armor fires, triple fire, double fire. Okay, so if we do decide to pull out the Africa Corps, it's just going to be a regular Panzer Corps operating in in mainland uh, mainland Europe. Okay.
anything else I would want to build or buy. I mean, I'm thinking that the allocation is worth it. This HQ can be built up. So that's what I'm going to do. Sorry, Eastern Front, you're going to go down by 10. Western Front will go up by another 10. So now we're at 26 production points. That's going to give me 10 more. Very obviously, let's spend it on OKW, right? Now, Army Group G here, in, in, in all, in all, in all uh, frankness, do I need to build it up? I wanted to build it up to see if I could take Tunis. But even if we take Tunis, I mean, you know, it, can we even hold on to it? Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if these these uh, production turns and, and builds and everything here are worth it. We got some pretty nice German units here in the north. But I want to basically, what I'm trying to say is abandon the north, move them to the south. Any other units that I would be of like notable build? Not really. We really don't have any quality, high quality German units right now on the uh, western front. And that's, a, and that's a big problem when it comes to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Allies. So all we have is Eastern Front production. We have 79 production points. That's a bummer. Um, but we're going to have to make do. I'm going to go ahead and build up our HQs. Let's just build them up, build them up, build them up. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That leaves me with 29 left, which very obviously I'm going to spend on... You know, spend it on this uh, mountain infantry. That leaves me with 24. Um, I think the Finnish get some production too, don't they? Yeah, they have nine production points. Let's go ahead and build up the Mannerheim HQ. Build up this other unit as well. Um, so that's it for the Finnish. These units I could really use on the Western Front or, or Southern Front uh, somewhere. But they're just, they're just too far away. Uh, any other builds, let's go ahead and just build up all our infantry, especially in the areas where our, our our defensive lines are just not as strong as they could be. So that's one, two, three, four, and I can build four more, right? Uh, four more builds. So let's figure out what that looks like. In fact, I may even transfer OKH to the Western Front to maybe help remedy that problem a bit more. So three more builds, right? Uh, who do I want to build up? Oh, man, I can't even tell you. These units are looking very strong. Let's go ahead and build this guy up. Any other one, Any other units that I want to build up? I probably want to build up the mech units, actually. Let's go ahead and do that instead. Build up these mech core. Just make sure they're extra tough. No, no. I cancel that. Just going to go ahead and build up infantry... No, let's 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 just stick to the mech core builds. Okay, so that's it for the axis. Not a whole lot of gain in production, I will say, but tis the nature of the conflict. We can now switch over to the allies, and I think I'll start with the Soviet production first. Uh, they're doing decently well. Uh, well, their production is very bad. It's fifty three right now, but they still have enough to at least build up units. I think it's very clear. Let's keep focusing our builds over here. So just build, build, build. Um, I want all these infantry to be at full strength. So that's already a build of six plus another three is nine, right? So I just spent nine there. Uh, that leaves me with what, uh, 44 production points left. Uh, with that 44, build up this HQ. Now it's 34, build up Stavka. Now it's 24. Um, with the remaining 24 that I have, I'm thinking that we should consider launching a, an offensive with our Soviet formations very soon. Um, I'm also thinking either build up Soviet strategic reserves. Uh, we probably could use a bit more reserves over here, frankly. For example, uh, was that 44, right? Oh, no, 24 rather. I can build up like a. I kind of want to, I want to arm an armored unit there actually in, um, which I'm going to call it Kido, Kido Vabad. So actually I'm going to put an armored unit in Baku as a reserve. And then, uh, let's just go ahead and build up, uh, maybe another mech unit. I said 24, right? Just build another mech, mech core there. Just stick a bunch of mech core there. So that's a uh, 14 production points. Um, I think. That leaves me with 10 left. Build up another unit in Baku. 
while I'm at it. And that leaves me with six production points only left over for the remainder of the front. Really, pretty much nothing as far as units. Um, we actually redeploy this armored unit. We're going to put in Rosny. And uh, with the remaining six, I think it would actually be a good idea to build up another mech core. Put it there. We have some now mobilized units that we could possibly use. So yeah, we're actually concentrating here in the south. Nothing, no new builds over here. So yeah, the Germans are gonna have a lot of time to to figure out their next moves pretty much. Um, so that's it for the Soviet production. Not very eventful, but you know, the Soviets are doing what they can. Now we can switch over to the allies, um, starting with the uh, production in the Mediterranean front. Uh, we can roll our, I think it's 30 production points as usual. It's been 30 for a while. Uh, oh no, this should say, should be like that. So yeah, it's still 30. That's going to be uh, six dice rolls. Their production is really low too. Um, they roll, what is that? Nine plus another seven. That's 16. That's not a whole lot for the, uh, for the British. Pretty obvious builds though. Build up this HQ. Also build up this 10th core. That's it for the British. Now, in theory, we could also spend more production points over here in the, on the Western Front. Technically, since we're getting supplies from the Western Front, we can use Western Front production points to build these units up. But this number cannot exceed the 16 that we just rolled. So in theory, I could send six over to the Western Front, which I think I'll do. Um, or maybe I won't. Let's see, the Western Front production right now is 23. So I think it's pretty obvious, build up this HQ, build up this other HQ. Uh, I just wanted to have as many HQs as I can. And um, that leaves me with only three left, uh, which I guess I have no choice but to just spend it on a militia unit. So let's just do that. And then we also get some um, allied reinforcements. Um, the Americans are arriving. These two units, I'm gonna put them in Algier. Algiers, right? Yeah, we're gonna put them right there. So now the Americans are in the game, and uh, we've got now our first American army, the equivalent of an army, now here in Algiers. I guess it's the first army group. It says the first army group, but thus far as, as far as its actual size, it's the equivalent of a U.S. army. And now we are actually going to get these forces on the move um, and, and put some serious pressure on the, on the axis. I'm about to do a pretty cool move, I think. And then, of course, with this beachhead marker, We'll go ahead and put it over here in the beachhead ready pile. So now the, the U.S. are looking very good. Now, what about diplomatic events? Um, I'll roll for both sides their diplomatic events. Um, I think the Allies don't really have any diplomatic events really available to them for this month. We did the second front. You know this this blockade, all these blockade rules. You know Sweden, all these rules pertain to the northern front. So until we invade Norway. You know, it's not it's not very relevant. Spain is neutral, so that's that. And then all these other rules uh, that came before that have pretty much already occurred. Most of these have already occurred in the war so far. There's a lot of Soviet rules, you know, Norway, Finland. You know, all, most of this action has already taken place. So, um, yeah. You know, Yugoslavia, they're all out of the war. Um, so the Axis are going to do a diplomatic event. And I can have, I have two choices. I can either get Finland to join the war, in which we gain three more production points on the Eastern Front, which would be helpful. Or I can try to do a, a Mideast uprising, try to get Syria and other nations um, to join the war, right? Um, you know, and see, see if they join the war, they, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, when Turkey joins the war, it actually... Um, yeah, if, if Turkey joins the war, the uprisings are actually can also occur as well. So there's an incentive for that. And we have a higher chance of succeeding. So I think I'm actually going to focus on getting Finland to join the Axis officially. And that way we can we have a 50% chance. And if we do that, um, we gain three more production points on the Eastern Front. Hopefully that's a little bit of production to compensate for the fact that we lost production on the Eastern Front. So let's do that die roll. We got the three. Uh, Finland has joined the Axis. So I'm going to use a marker here. 
that's over here is she's, there should be a marker here that says fx somewhere here. This is, here it is, xx, fx rather. And then I'm going to put it on the kind of our calendar here. I'll put it here in the month of November. Oh, and I also got to remember that the Western Front is mud. So the Allies should be slowed down a little bit by the, by the, by the weather. Something else to keep in mind. Um, okay, so um, we're now in November. Okay, so that's that. And I think we're ready now to start the operations of this month of November. I'm going to end the log file. I'm going to now start a new log file. And then we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to start the new log file. And then we'll start with the Western Front. Uh, we'll do the uh, die roll, dice rolls there for the weather determination. It is odd. So the Western Front, um, we're actually getting mud. And we've got a roll of a five. And so what does a roll of a five mean? It means that um, certain sea areas are actually going to be um, have some storms. Namely, the Atlantic Basin has a storm. So all that means is that we can't do amphibious invasions um, across the Atlantic Basin, which, which doesn't really apply to the British or the Americans right now. But we can still trace supplies, um, no problem. Th those, those freighter ships are pretty robust. And uh, North Africa is not penalized by, by any of that. So that's that. I believe, though, this HQ here, since it's not in London, is going to suffer from is going to suffer from um, from the uh, from the weather from the mud. Let me just double check those rules pertaining to weather. Sea invasions. Sea movement. Sea control. Sea supplies. Uh, no, these are all sea moves. I'm looking for weather. Airstrike. Here we go. Uh, it says uh, weather effects. So mud weather. Um, note, yes, yeah, Supreme HQ is in London, Moscow, or Warsaw. This HQ is not in London right now, so we can't really use it. This is the move that I plan on doing with the Axis. Are you ready? Uh, or the Allies, rather. I'm going to activate this HQ. This, uh, I'm going to, yeah, go ahead, activate this uh, American unit. And then I think, hmm, how do I want to do this? There's two ways to do this. Um, I'm thinking that the best course of action, I was going to do a really cool, crazy, funky move, but I think the better move right now is we're going to kind of play it safe, I think. I'm going to deploy it over here, and then I'm going to make it a blitz. Okay, oh, you know what? Dang it, that's not actually the best move, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, the, Amer the American situation is actually a little tenuous. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to deploy more units forward. It's harder than I thought. Definitely harder than I thought. So... In order for this sequence to work, no, I think we're just going to leave it as it is. And we're just going to get these units uh, just marching away. Or, or the, the American units, um, even though they're infantry, the, the Western Allied powers, all their units are actually, um, they all are um, a speed of three because they're all fully motorized units. So yeah, that's I think that's the only move I'm going to do, and then just simply deactivate this HQ. We'll leave it in Algiers, but the Americans are on their way. That's that's the main takeaway, and that's that's the one takeaway that you know we need to have. The Americans are approaching. Um, so yeah, we'll just stick to that. Be a little bit more conservative with our move. The British will hold the line for now. Nothing there to do in Egypt. Um, I also have to do the rolling for the Eastern Front. Let's do that. It's also mud, and it was a die roll of seven, 
So the storm table is going to be in the eastern Baltic Basin, which would be up here, right? So there's storms over there. Um, and we also have mud on the eastern front. So chances are, we're yeah, if it's mud, we're going to pass. Uh, so technically, it's actually the Axis who have the strategic initiative on the eastern front. So I think we finished the Western Allied Powers. We'll switch over to the Axis now and do their moves. If it's, the, if it's the Eastern Front and it's mud, I don't think there's anything I want to do with the Axis on this turn. The only thing I could consider doing is maybe trying to launch an attack, trying to advance this HQ a little further. Um, but I, I'll tell you now, we, we really could use some more reinforcements. Um, the Soviets just have a lot of units built up here and we're like completely outnumbered. So... Uh, we I think we're gonna pass for the uh, pass on the axis, um, or we could try to keep attacking. No, I, I don't recommend that the axis keep attacking. I think we should just hold off because the weather is so unfavorable. We're gonna probably chances are the eastern front is gonna be very defensive for the axis. Unfortunately, uh, even though I want to keep pushing, advancing, I think as far as cost effectiveness, it's, it's better that we just rinse and repeat our strategy that we did last time. And make it the number one priority to rebuild our army. Just focus on rebuilding all our units, making sure all our infantry are at full strength, and then eventually making sure our HQs are at full strength too. So that is that. Um, the Axis can make a move on the Western Front. The only problem is that um, our HQ, many, many of our HQs are currently disrupted. And that's no bueno. Um, I decided I was going to pull out of Alexandria, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to activate OKW. And I'm going to try to get more reinforcements moving to the south. Or maybe I wait another turn. Except the fact that uh, Tunisia is about to fall. Maybe I wait until the next turn to get more reinforcements on the move. No, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and activate OKW because I still want to get more units in Sicily. See if I can get this unit to Sicily. So that's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, that's, that's as far as it can go. Here's a, there's, that's two supreme moves right there. One and two. Next one is uh, this guy. One, two, three, four. No, no, hold on. Let's get him, uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so then I have one more supreme move left, and the only only obvious one is to uh, get this guy here to occupy to to cover the space that I just pulled out of, and that's it. That's all we can do with the axis. That's all she wrote. But at the very least, the good news is that at the very least this this HQ is now safe. It feels very safe now. And so is Rome. Rome is safe too. So that's it. We're gonna just do that. Um, the Allies, yeah, the Americans are making a move. I, chances are, I want to pull this Italian unit out of, of North Africa while I can. The other thing to do is to decide what am I doing about um, Alexandria. And I think uh, I think the wiser move is to abandon Alexandria, right? Or maybe we try to wait a little longer before we launch our attack. Um, it's hard to say. I think that winter opportunity, if it ever comes back, hmm, I think I'm going to pull out. Uh, I really don't want to, but I think we have no choice. So I'm going to put this unit here. That guy there, I think this guy there, this guy will move one, two, one, two, three, like that. Yeah, I'm just going to get a very methodical withdrawal, deactivate this HQ, leave it back at Tobruk. And that's really all we can do. That's all we can, that's all we can afford right now for the, uh, for the Axis. Um, but the good news is that Actually, let's get, let's get this uh, mech core right there. 
Good news is that we can at least just try to pull out our, our forces back. But we're, we're on the retreat. We're almost pulling back. We're going to send them send send units over to Tunisia. And if, if not to Tunisia, at least get them to Tripoli so that we can protect Libya. The primary strategic objective for the Africa Corps is to protect Libya at all costs, right? If we lose Libya, um, Italy becomes demoralized, and then we're in bad shape. Um, let me read up on the rules for Italian demoralization, actually. Um, see what are the conditions for that. Where would that be? Here's Italy, Italian forces, Italian defeat. No, 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 command of supplies. What about Italian demoralization? But it talks about belligerence, talks about peacetime production. So 16.71 is, is how it will get demoralized. Hopefully my audio is not is pretty good, folks. So, I mean, I'm just still trying to learn how to speak into this mic properly, not make it too quiet nor too loud. Hopefully the audio is pretty good. Okay, I think I think yeah, that's that's good. I don't have to keep it too close. But uh, let's look for 16.71. Here it is, demoralization, satellite Italy. If the Allies control Libya, Sicily, Sardinia, Albania, or a major city in Italy. Oh, man. Wow. So that means they could also the Allies could also invade Sardinia and demoralize Italy. I think the short answer is that we, we, we can't defend everywhere. So uh, we, we, we should uh, really consider uh, pulling the F out <laughs> of, uh, of Egypt. I think that was the better move. Uh, you know, in fact, I'm thinking if I were to blitz, would that accelerate the operations um, a little bit? But it would also cost us a lot more resources too. I think the main goal right now is to try to get as many uh, German units in these ports, Tobruk and Benghazi. We can get those units in those ports. We're, we're gonna we're gonna be in pretty good shape. Okay, so that is that. Um, we could also use OKH on the on the Western Front, but I'm gonna hold off for a little while longer. Um, yeah, we're gonna hold off. So that's it for the axis on the Western Front. I think we're gonna pass on the Eastern Front. We can now switch over to the Allied side, namely the Soviets and see what they do, right? And uh, we're going to go ahead and it's mud, so that's a very obvious pass for the Soviet army. And so now we'll move on to the next four night. We'll do a dice roll, starting with the Eastern Front, and it is now snow, it's even. And then I guess it will be another dice dice roll to, to see what the, what the storm tables are gonna look like. And I rolled a nine, so that's gonna be the Arctic Basin that now is stormy. So we'll get rid of that storm, put that storm in here. And then we also change the icon to now snow. So it's do have an initiative right now. And uh, what do we want to do for the Soviets? I mean, I would argue that the best thing for the Soviets to do is to uh, attack. The only problem I, I think is that our units that are eligible for such an attack, they're a little under strength. So what I'm gonna, what I think I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna still make some sort of attack. Also, yeah, some sort of attack. And we're gonna just do like a recon and force. That's the idea. So I think I'm gonna move this unit to Stadioskol, this unit there. Also get this cavalry to attack. That's actually the main unit I wanted attacking. No, 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 I think a better place to attack Huh. No, we're gonna hold off. We're gonna no, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off with the Soviets a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. So even though it's snow, the Soviets are gonna pass on the eastern front. Um, the Allies still have the initiative on the western front. Let's go ahead and do the die roll there. Also another turn of mud for the western front. And it's also another nine. So I'm pretty sure it hasn't changed. It's Atlantic Basin is where we have the storms. Um, so the Allies do have the initiative. 
Um, now it's obvious that I have no choice but to activate this HQ, even though it's under strength. It's going to be uh, not under strength, but uh, disrupted. So it's a minus one. So I only have two supreme moves. And those two supreme moves, let's go ahead and uh, just bring up another reinforcement. Just go ahead and uh, transfer over this, this uh, unit, this British unit, to Gibraltar. I think that's probably the better choice. And then we'll go ahead. That's the only supreme move we've got. No, we have two. We actually have two. Oh, but it was a, it was, it was a distance of two. Moved across two basins. So, yeah, two, the two supreme moves were spent there, two C moves. Deactivate this HQ. Then I'm going to send it back to London via rail. So we don't have the problem again on the next turn. And that's it for the Allies. Um, I think the only other thing I would want to do is, I think I'm going to go ahead and activate this American HQ one more time. And I'm going to go ahead and get these American units further advancing uh, to the east. And in this way, we are now putting, we've, we've, we've secured Tunisia, basically. And now we're like, seriously pinning down seriously pinning down um, the uh, seriously pinning down these uh, this Italian unit something like that other thing I wanted to point out was what um, I wanted to see the reinforcements we don't get any more reinforcements not not for a, a while so we're gonna have to work with what we got here but we, we got at least one more British Corps that can arrive. And um, yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty good setup for the Americans. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I think we've got Tunis in the bag at this point. I feel pretty confident that we can take Tunisia. Now, in theory, the Axis could land somewhere around here. And they actually can't even cut off our supplies because we the Tunis is our supply source for these American units. Very cool. We now switch over to the Axis, who are going to wrap up this turn and see what they can do. And then uh, we'll keep uh, keep the day rolling, keep the day moving. So it is mud, not much, not very eventful for the uh, for the Eastern Front, or, or rather, excuse me, Western Front thinking I'm just going to go ahead and activate this Africa core one more time and we're just going to hightail it highly hightail the heck out of there one two three and one two three now we'll leave that guy's a rear guard and then I think this Africa core unit will go one two three hmm Probably want to leave it in Tobruk. Yeah. So at least we have well, at least we have a rear guard. We left we left a rear guard. That should slow down the British. Um, oh, actually, I just realized we could have attacked with the British from Egypt, but I forgot. Oh well, I guess we won't. And they yeah, had to deactivate that HQ there. So again, I think the, the, the mission objective right now is Tripoli. Got to reinforce Tripoli um, ASAP. ASAP, as soon as possible. Was that, was that the right move? I think so. Just trying to preserve as many Axis troops um, as we can. Unfortunately, though, may not be in time to, to, to even save Tripoli. We will see. We will see. We'll see how these battles go. Um, now, as as the uh, as the Axis, I could in theory do an amphibious invasion, but mm, no, I'm going to hold off. Okay, so spent all, all all this time trying to build up the Africa Corps, only then to spend all that all those resources, right? on just just pretty much um just moving these units moving them back into libya what a mess it would have been really nice if we had a rail line i'll tell you now if we had a rail line extending through libya we could have moved in through through supreme moves and that would have been excellent 
Instead, we got these really cumbersome roads that are just logistically a pain for any advancing army. Eastern Front production, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, we're going to pass. I also have to say that right now I'm kind of foregoing the opportunity to get Turkey in the war. Um, and the longer I wait, chances are the, op the opportunity will be completely gone. We'll see. I'm thinking that uh, it's better for the Axis to focus on the grand strategy, building up their units, than it is to get two tonal vision on a, in an individual battle that may decide the fate of the whole war. No. Uh, that's exactly what happened in Stalingrad. Instead, we're focusing on just trying to um, just be as efficient as we can and fortify all these sectors and then, you know, prepare for the next year because we're, we are playing the long game there. But the Western Front definitely needs more production, more reinforcements, etc., etc. And um, that will be it. That will sum up this turn. Um, it is winter. It is winter on this turn, though. I just realized it is winter. I mean, if there's any if there's any time to attack uh, Leninakan, now would be a good good opportunity. But uh, the real question is is can we attack and succeed? Pretty sure units will be pinned down there too if I decide to attack. And that will be pretty 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 bad if we can't uh, can't get them out. So I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. So maybe maybe we will we will not succeed at getting Turkey into the war after all. It doesn't look it looks like it's not not happening right now. Not with the loss of Tunisia. Not not with such a rapid loss of Tunisia. So that was a nice move by the Allies. We got got to give them credit there. Um, and then the other thing to point out is that uh, Sicily is very vulnerable to uh, to an Allied invasion. Very very vulnerable right now to an Allied invasion. The Allies do succeed in taking, I meant to say Sardinia. If they take Sardinia, they will demoralize the Ita Italians completely. And that will be no bueno. So we'll see what the uh, Axis have in mind. But uh, I think I'm going to wrap up this video here. And so, yeah, thanks for tuning in. This turn went a lot faster than other turns as this game, this game is once you get the hang of it, I mean, it shouldn't take so long to play. I'll tell you now, the, the situation for the Axis is very tenuous in all the sectors. Such, such a strategic mess, frankly. Um, but that is the nature of war, unfortunately. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up here, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace out.